Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is Book Chats and I'm back. I'm so sorry that I was gone for more than a month. I moved and I lost my external hard drive and I don't actually have space to film and edit when I don't have an external hard drive. So I bought a new one, which is plugged in right now, and I am filming things again. And today I am filming the fall time cozy time book tag, which was created last year by Novels and Nonsense, but this year I was tagged by Michelle from Michelle is Life. These are all questions that are kind of based around fall things, and uh, so I'll say like the fall thing and then the question that comes from it, and then I'll answer it. Crunching leaves. The world is full of color in the fall, especially the leaves on the trees. Choose a book that has reds, oranges, and yellows on the cover. I chose Unspoken by Sarah Rees Brennan. The original cover, not the crappy new cover. The original cover is straight up the reason I read this book. It's beautiful. It's got like this paper cutout of like a gate and a girl and it has this beautiful red behind it and it has like fallen leaves from the fall on it and it's just awesome. Love this cover. Love this book. Not as hot on its sequels. Question number two is cozy sweater. It's finally cold enough, finally, finally, as of this weekend. <clears throat> I live in Texas now. It's not that cold. Um, it's finally cold enough to done warm, cozy clothing. What book gives you the warm fuzzies? So this is a book that I consistently rate like three stars. I think it's good, but not great. But then I find myself rereading it whenever I like want to feel warm and fuzzy and good inside. Specifically, there's this one scene, this one scene that I'm like, oh, I want to read that again because of oh, romance. Anyway, that book is Crown Duel by Sherwood Smith. I'm specifically referring to the bind up that is both Crown Duel and Court Duel that they renamed Crown Duel because you have to read both books together to get all the warm fuzzies. But I just love it. It's fantasy. It's very classic fantasy and it just has so many good things in it. I pretty much read this every 1.5 years or so. I really wish I could have read it again this year and I kind of want to read it again this year now that I'm talking about it. But I have way too many other books to read. Fall storm. The wind is howling and the rain is pounding. It totally was last weekend. But choose your favorite book or genre that you like to read on a stormy day. So I'm going to go with genre. In general, on stormy days, I like to read things that are like opposite of the weather outside. So rather than reading something like dark and stormy and haunting, which I don't really read anyway, I really enjoy reading like YA contemporary or like chick lit. It just, it makes me smile inside. And it's usually a pretty fast read. I can feel like I accomplished something when I really just sat on my butt all day inside and read books. All right, cool, crisp air. Who or what is the coolest character you want to trade places with? I thought about this a bunch and then I was like, duh, this character and this book are still like the coolest. It is Turtle from the Westing game. Turtle is just like smart and snappy and interesting. I love the Westing game so much, guys. Like this is another book that I reread all the time, all the time being like every 1.5 years. It's so cool. It's so well constructed and Turtle is awesome. Love her to pieces. Would totally trade places with her, sort of. Or be her friend. I feel like trading places with someone who's cool, then you like don't get to be around the cool person. I don't know. All right, the next question is hot apple cider. What underhyped book do you want to see become the next biggest, hottest thing? So I was going to say The Piper's Son because, oh my gosh, I just want The Piper's Son to be, I just, all, all the people should read it, all of you. But I talk about that book way too much on my channel. Like, I'm pretty sure every two months I mention it in a video. So I wanted to talk about something that I don't really talk about on my channel. This was super popular when it came out, but it came out like 40, 50 years ago. And I don't feel like our generation has really picked up on it. And I, I feel like more people should read it because I just feel like you would like it. Every time I'm watching a video and someone mentions or talks about or hauls The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, I'm just like, but have you read A Tree Goes in Brooklyn? Have you? Have you? Because guys, like this, this book, it's, it doesn't have the magical realism that The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender has, but it does have this kind of multi-generational story that's being told and like you care not just for the main character but about her mother and her aunt and other people who are in her life. It has this kind of like wistful things to say about love and first love and later love and like which loves are successful but like which loves will always affect you and I just cannot say enough good things about A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. So if you have not read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn and maybe you've heard of it before and maybe you haven't but if that sounds like something interesting to you, an intergenerational story story about growing up in the tenements in New York, you should read this book. Done. Coats, 
scarves, and mittens, the weather has turned cold, and it's time to cover up. What's the most embarrassing book cover you own that you like to keep hidden in public? So I kind of feel like you just have to own it. You are going to be reading and you're going to be reading in public and you just have to own that sometimes you read awkward, weird books. And definitely there's a book that I literally just ordered yesterday that will supersede the books I'm going to talk about as the most embarrassing cover because of the title and the picture. In the same vein though, I think the most embarrassing book that book covers that I currently own are my NASCAR Harlequins. It's not like they have scantily clad people on the front embracing each other or anything like that, but they are clearly Harlequin slash romance novels and also clearly associated with NASCAR and also have the most ridiculous taglines. The most ridiculous taglines. So the final question is actually not about books. It is about fall deliciousness and that is pumpkin spice. What is your favorite fall time comfort food or foods? I'm actually gonna talk about one food and two drinks. So the food I'm gonna talk about is apple crisp because apple crisp is the best crisp. Actually, all crisps are the best crisps. Anyway, I love apples. I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota is a great apple state. They have so many delicious apples you can't even. I love apple crisp because it's apples and sugar and oatmeal and butter and cinnamon, all things I love, all baked together to make something that is greater than the sum of its parts. It's beautiful. And then the two drinks I'm gonna talk about are, of course, related to apple crisp, apple cider, which is delicious, but don't give me that disgusting powder stuff they have at Starbucks. I want the real deal. And then I also really enjoy wassail, which is a drink that you make with apple cider, but also like oranges and orange juice and cloves and cinnamon. And I really love cloves. Like possibly my favorite thing about fall is all the clove scented things. And so I really enjoy getting to drink wassail when I can. And I think there's a version of it that you make that also has alcohol in it, but I never make that version because I don't need that version. I'm gonna be real with you guys, I don't. So the final thing to do is just think of warm, cozy bonfires, which I actually associate more with summer. So maybe just like a warm, cozy fireplace fire. Spread the cozy warmth, who do I tag? So this tag is from last year, so I like cursorily looked to see if people have been tagged this year, but if you were tagged or did this tag last year, I'm sorry, you don't have to do it again, or you can totally do it again with new books because you have a whole year of reading between last year and this year. Anyway, I'm just gonna tag a bunch of people because I just got back on my channel and I just feel like tagging everyone, whatever. Don't judge. So I wanna tag Mandy from Oh It's Mandy, April from April Sarah, Samantha from Thoughts on Tones, Stephanie from Shine Notebooks, Casey from A Basket Casey Reads, who is so freaking adorable, I love you, Sarah Ella from Sarah Ella, and Jen from Today in Jen's Library. I would love to hear what all of you have to say about fall reads and cozy times and just the fall in general. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging with me during my period of silence. And I will talk to you guys in the future. Bye. Honestly, is it fall? The leaves are still on the trees. And it's almost November. That cover is dead to me. I want the real deal. Whatever, I'm gonna be me. Thank you, no thank you, pop sugar. Anyway, turtle. Tropical storm. Oh, I love her! But have you read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn? Because you should read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn.